Hi, it's Patrick Hatzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered. And in last week's episode, I answered another question from one of our readers. And the question last week was, how long does a cardiac arrest patient stay in intensive care? You can check out last week's question by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another frequently asked question by our dear readers at intensivecarehotline.com. And the question this week is, how long should a patient be on a ventilator before having a tracheostomy? So your critically ill loved one has been admitted to intensive care and they require invasive or tube ventilation with a breathing tube, also known as an endotracheal tube in their mouth. And they are attached to a ventilator and they are in an induced coma in order to be able to tolerate mechanical ventilation as it is rather uncomfortable and painful. After a few days of ventilation, if your loved one is still unable to quote unquote wake up from the induced coma, or if they are unable to wake up from a natural coma, therefore your critically ill loved one may still require the breathing tube or endotracheal tube for mechanical ventilation because they can't manage and protect their own airway through coughing or swallowing and they are also most likely still unable to breathe spontaneously. Furthermore, the mechanical ventilation and the breathing tube or endotracheal tube may also be required to manage a significant respiratory issue such as pneumonia, ARDS or lung failure, COPD or asthma, just to name a few. If that's the case, the breathing tube or endotracheal tube and mechanical ventilation is a significant risk and safety issue that continues to require sedation and an induced coma most of the time. You may have heard the doctors and the nurses talk about performing a tracheostomy or a tracheostomy for your loved one as your loved one is expected to require ventilation for a few more days or even few more weeks. As a rule of thumb, it is usually advisable to perform a tracheostomy after about 7 to 14 days of ventilation, if ongoing ventilation is expected and if a slow and difficult weaning of the ventilator is expected. There are other less common reasons as well that may lead to tracheostomy, such as swallowing difficulties and sometimes a difficult anatomy, such as a short neck that may lead to tracheostomy. With swallowing difficulties, they are often a result of neurological conditions such as stroke, seizures, significant head or brain injuries and so forth, or hypoxic brain injury as well. But before you even want to look at tracheostomy as an option, have a look at another article and video that I wrote about how to wean a critically ill patient in intensive care of the ventilator and the breathing tube. There you can make sure the intensive care unit is doing everything within their power to wean your loved one off the ventilator in the first place. And if you are watching this video on YouTube, click on the link below this video that'll get you to our website where you have access to all the links to our other articles and videos, including the one, how to wean a critically ill patient in intensive care off the ventilator and the breathing tube. So let's quickly look at the main advantages of a tracheostomy. They are less sedation is required for your critically ill loved one to tolerate mechanical ventilation. As you may have seen, your loved one may require a fair amount of sedation and opiates. Opiates are also known as painkillers to keep them in an induced coma for ventilation and therefore keep them comfortable. 
Having a breathing tube or endotracheal tube in the mouth is very uncomfortable and therefore requires sedation and opiates in order to tolerate mechanical ventilation and the breathing tube or endotracheal tube. With a tracheostomy, sedation can literally be weaned off immediately after the tracheostomy has been performed and your critically ill loved one should be able to come out of the induced coma relatively quickly. Sometimes there are reasons why your critically ill loved one may still require to stay in an induced coma even after a tracheostomy has been performed. However, this would only be the case if your loved one remains very unstable for reasons such as raised intracranial brain pressures or hemodynamic instability such as low blood pressure or irregular heart rhythms or sometimes when on a therapy called ECMO. ECMO can sometimes also be performed on awake patients but again I put a link uh, below this video towards ECMO so you can find out more information there. Next, Weaning off the ventilator may be commenced the next day after the tracheostomy has been performed if your loved one's condition allows. It may still be rel a relatively slow process. However, your critically ill loved one should be able to spend the first hour or so off the ventilator once the sedation has been taken away and an assessment can be made on how long it might take to wean your loved one off the ventilator. Next, tolerating ventilation with a tracheostomy is so much easier and doesn't require a great deal of sedation so that your loved one should be able to at least try and mouth words and is able to move their lips. Also, brushing teeth and performing mouth care is so much easier and it only improves the well-being for your loved one. A tracheostomy usually doesn't cause any pain, unlike the breathing tube or endotracheal tube. Other related articles and videos around this topic that I put uh, below this video in links is how long can a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube stay in and also what are the risks and benefits of a tracheostomy. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, just click on the link below this video that will get you to our website to the written version of this blog and I put the links to those articles in the written version. You just need to click on the links. Next, setbacks can be managed much easier with a tracheostomy. For example, if your critically ill loved one needs to go back on a ventilator after having time off the ventilator has been achieved, it is easy to switch back and forth be between spontaneous ventilation and mechanical ventilation and controlled ventilation. Often during the daytime patients are able to breathe without the ventilator, but during the night time they do require mechanical ventilation and it is often required for rest periods. Next, mobilization in a chair is usually a lot easier as well when having a tracheostomy. And your loved one may also be able to tolerate sips of water or tea or crushed ice and that improves your loved one's comfort and well-being as well. There may also be times when even a tracheostomy doesn't improve your loved one's condition in the short term and your loved one may have a hard, difficult and prolonged time in intensive care because they are unable to be weaned off the ventilator. Sometimes despite tracheostomy ventilation, your critically ill loved one may be kept in intensive care for long term ventilator dependency and that can be an extremely frustrating experience for both your critically ill loved one and for you as a family. If this is the case, you, your family and your critically ill loved one need to be patient to a point and you also need to start thinking about genuine alternatives if your critically ill loved one in, stays in intensive care for too long. Again, as a rule of thumb, everything above four weeks being ventilator dependent is far too long and generally requires an alternative approach. In many countries such as Australia, Germany and the United States, many long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies are going home with the help of specialized and dedicated intensive home care nursing services. Have a look at intensive care at home. You can find more information at intensivecareathome.com. This service provides a genuine alternative to a long-term stay in intensive care. A pitfall for tracheostomy, especially for our readers in the United States, is simply that after a tracheostomy has been done, 
patients are often being pushed out of intensive care into LTAC or long-term acute care facilities, and they are quite simply a disaster. Furthermore, especially when it comes to tracheostomy in the United States, the risk is that once a tracheostomy is performed, that the ICU wants to send your loved one to long-term acute care, also known as LTAC. This strikes a disaster as LTACs are designed to save money, but not to provide quality care for critically ill patients on ventilation. If LTAC is mentioned as an option for your loved one after or before they have a tracheostomy, your alarm bells need to go off and you will need to avoid LTAC at any cost. I can't tell you how many desperate families we have calling every week who want us to help them to get their loved ones out of LTAC. We can help them achieve that with our one-on-one -on -one consulting and advocacy service, and we have many success stories around that. However, more importantly, we can help you advocate and make a clinical argument to keep your critically ill loved one in the right environment in the first place, which is intensive care. The only place where a patient can be safely looked after on a ventilator with tracheostomy or with a breathing tube is intensive care, period. If you are not clear on this, it could literally cost the life of your loved one. The only alternative for patients on ventilation with tracheostomy is intensive care at home, where highly skilled and specialized intensive care nurses provide 24-hour care in your home for your loved one as a genuine alternative to a long-term stay in intensive care. Why? I'm so glad you've asked. Because anybody on a ventilator needs the skills and, and expertise of a critical care nurse, critical care doctor, etc. Anything less than that is literally killing patients. Let me say this again one more time, because if you're not clear on what is clinically required for your loved one, on a ventilator with tracheostomy, it could literally kill your critically ill loved one. Because long-term acute care facilities or LTACs simply don't have the skills, the expertise and professionalism to look after a critically ill patient on a ventilator with tracheostomy. Most of the time, LTACs work with doctors and nurses who have no ICU skills and expertise. Hence, they have no skills and expertise to look after ventilated patients. The only place where a patient can be safely looked after on a ventilator with tracheostomy or with a breathing tube is intensive care. And you need to be very clear on that because it could literally cost the life of your loved one. And unfortunately, we have many families come to us when it's too late, when their loved one is dying in LTAC. So thanks for watching this video. And the next question for you really is, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? How can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You will get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you will learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control, and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you will learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand What's really happening in intensive care? In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. 
how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You will get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also, have a look at our membership site, intensivecaresupport.org, for families of critically ill patients in intensive care. Or you can call me, see international, find international phone numbers on the top of the website. Also, have a look at our product section where you get more ebooks, videos, and audio recordings, and where you can also get one on one consulting and advocacy with myself via Skype, over the phone, or via email. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.